your first uh, guy you went on the loop with was Rennie Dupree. Yeah. Right. And Rennie Dupree, I don't think he was long off the WWE either, but he just looked the size of him, his carriage, oh he was God. massive, like, you know? Yeah. And um, that was a pretty impressive guy physically. And I always remember, that, have, have a picture of it and pop up here as well. When the two of would face it, he's obviously taller and he's looking down at you. Yeah. But when you won that match, just the reaction of the kids was, yeah. Yeah, R Rene was a super athlete, obviously, and just so naturally gifted and had that incredible look. And like, he was a legit giant. He was a big guy, yeah, both in impressive. terms of his physique and his height as well. Uh, and like I said earlier, I'm not a tall guy. So that became very apparent, like, you know, when I would stand in front of him. But I kind of looked at it like, you know, if you look at that right, it's like Ivan Drago and Rocky. You ever look at the standoff between Ivan Drago and Rocky? Ivan Drago's looking down at Rocky. He's the underdog. And I think... That's, yeah, that's a good comparison. That's the way I came across. I was And I think it's very realistic to compare the, the Rene Dupree to... Yeah, Ivan Drago. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, like... It, like in ring and stuff like that yeah, I really enjoyed my matches with Rene he was he was really good you know um, he he looked again I was still green at the time and he really helped me out and looked after me and, and tried to uh, make me shine tried to really like make me look good which I really appreciate <laughs> Rene I think it's French Canadians a lot of French Canadians have this very blase kind of little uh, oh he was super chill uh, guy know? he was just like yeah. and um so I was thinking, he's is, is not taking you serious, me serious, but just his per well, no, it was his personality. But remember, um, I put him in a match with Madman Manson on the fourth show he was in. Um, and he was beating Manson by, was it count that word he goes? Just getting him ready for a match with you that you beat one of the other faces and you were going to beat him. And he went <laughs> like seven minutes and I had the match for like 15. I'd like to point him out perfectly, build up as it went along, and depending on what was in the card, he went seven minutes. And I remember having this chat on backstage and saying, man, you can't be doing that, you know. And I, I, I said something along the lines of, what if I only pay you half your money? You know, which wrestlers hate when you mess with their money. Mm. And uh, I could tell why he was a bit offended. Like, And again, a tough guy who could slap me around if you wanted. But um, obviously, he had money to make. And after that match with you, because it was, it was a DVD taping, so we needed it a certain length. Yeah, it was a long And time. as a rib, <laughs> ready to free, I said, I want you to do half an hour matches around the loop that went to DVD type because like he did in fairness to him wow he went out there and That's he did professional. it professional and um <laughs> very impressed very very impressed with Randy Dupree so it's mad how you have one one thought of a person you, you you know so don't always read people the wrong way like but for me he did as a promoter what was asked yeah put everybody over didn't complain had his match got he was a cool guy as well just to be around he was nice like I said he was very chilled very relaxed uh, and I think like he went on he reinvented himself quite a lot as well even in terms Japan, of his look think, yeah, yeah yeah I thought that was yeah, really cool he ended up in, in Japan um, and his father actually I don't know if people know uh, he's a it, legendary wrestler as well promote yeah a wrestler and a promote speaking of French Canadians then you would have wrestled around the same tour and after that PCO yeah he reinvented himself there oh, wow. in the last few years what a reinvention again another yeah. uh, professional uh, wrestler to deal with put everybody over yeah um, yeah that's Fair all I, I like with, with him like all I can say was exactly what you say he's just very professional he was very nice in the locker room and another guy that you wanted I'm sure he could hurt you in the real world but he cho chose not to like yeah so, absolutely yeah, and, and carry himself well a big giant yeah. a big giant as well like you said like he but in the ring great so good and again i was green as grass uh, and they maneuvered me around the ring and again taught me a lot as well there's a match i'll put some some clips here and it's on the youtube channel suicide fighter youtube channel and it's you and eugene in a tag match against pco and rene dupree yeah, in and cork cork yeah and uh, it was a great match because they obviously were just it was a short enough match it was, a, it was a second match at the end of the night you said work twice on the show and um yeah you could see them just obviously yeah. kind of telling you what to do in the match and you just did this this you know went along with it and i actually enjoyed that match for what it was it's a very basic match yeah the fans yeah. love this sold a lot of merchandise so it's it's yeah 
The, it was a it was a big crowd as well. There was I about think. 600 yeah. in, that, in that night in Cork. It was a big arena. We had, had about 600 people in and they had to eat up. Eating up yeah. that show. And all the lads put in a good job in fairness to them, like, you know, mm. really did. Yeah, it was a good show. I remember that. I remember that tag match. Yeah. So, any promoters out there, um, any issues with the wrestlers, or you think you might have, just have a chat with them and you, you know from there. I mean, they pay respect both ways works like you know yes absolutely. and if somebody's putting your talent over taking their finisher um fair play to them like you know yeah you, you have to respect that as well yeah, that's a